So as you guys are aware, we've been talking about Dustborn a lot recently, and one of the main conversations around Dustborn is the fact that this video game was funded by the EU, right? Like this game was actually governmentally funded, which actually would make anybody just lose their mind, considering with number one, how much this game actually didn't make money. I mean, it had a top player count of 87 on Steam. It was a massive failure. So that means all that taxpayer revenue has went to complete and utter shit. But the fact of the matter is, not only is this game EU funded, right? But apparently this game and others like it are US government funded because the US government has spent over a quarter million dollars on a counter disinformation game. Let it be known, ladies and gentlemen, this is not very shocking information. If you've been following what's been going on, not only with ESG, DEI, and of course, the rebranded bridge, if you guys have been following what's been going on with that stuff, you'd realize that, yes, they absolutely are using video games as a form of entertainment to try to indoctrinate the masses in any way they possibly can. They do this with multitude different video games, and the EU is no different. Dustborn is just another example of that fact. Now, again, this game has been known to be seemingly what looks like an antifa training camp uh camp right where they uh try to teach you about critical race theory and i don't know words words that shouldn't be said or whatever the case may be just dumb shit you would expect from a college liberal that just fucking graduated right but unfortunately it seems like this is going to continue to be a thing as counter different disinformation is just their latest thing that they're trying to control right they're trying to control what you think what you say and what you do and this is just another way for them to do it so let's get into this article guys from that park place but of course before we do if you are new here just consider hitting that subscribe button i would greatly appreciate it and like the video to push us out into that youtube algorithm it says, in the wake of Red Thread Games releasing Dustborn, it was revealed the developer received funding from the European Union as well as the Norwegian Film Institute. Now it's been reported that the U.S. government spent over a quarter of million of dollars on a counter-disinformation game. Former World of Warcraft team lead Mark Kern, a.k.a. Grums, reported that Dustborn received 14 million kroner, or 1.4 million for the Norwegian Film Institute, as well as 150,000 euros from the Creative EU grant program. Again, I want you guys to realize something. These numbers... They honestly make me sick. I'm not even going to lie to you. Like, these numbers make me sick. The fact that a game like Dustborn got almost uh, or essentially 1.5 million fucking dollars is disgusting to me. How is a game like Dustborn getting 1.5 million dollars and selling maybe 100 units if they're lucky and everybody's looking at each other and saying, great job, guys? Like, it, how is that fucking possible? It just goes to show that the government will waste money uh, through and through as much as they possibly can, so long as they get their ideologically, uh, you know, ideological message out there. That's the most important thing. The money is not important for them. It's getting the message out there. So if they got to blow 1.5 million taxpayer dollars in order to get an Antifa training game out there, guess what? They're going to fucking do it. Following this report, Stuttering Craig, who owns the Side Scrollers podcast, shared the United States government funded a counter disinformation game to the tune of $275,000 back in 2021. He wrote on X, everyone is laughing at Norway and the EU for funding Dustborn, but a quick search shows the U.S. also provided $275,000 of funding for a new counter disinformation game. Uh, in, the, in fact, a document from the U.S. Embassy, the Hague Public Affairs section of the U.S. Department of State, issued a notice of funding for the game. This notice stated the following. The U.S. Embassy, the Hague Public Affairs Section, announces an open competition for organizations to submit applications to, number one, produce an English and Dutch language pilot version of a counter-disinformation game. Requirements below. Number two, produce a French version of the game. Number three, produce one additional translation into European, Asian, and or African language to be determined at a later date. Number four, host the game on the company's own servers. And number five, develop and implement data collection and analysis methodologies to demonstrate the project's achievement of expected results. <laughs> expected results. That's interesting wording. Uh, number six, promote games to target audiences. Please carefully follow all instructions below. So yeah, this entire thing is just a massive indoctrination camp. That's really what it is. They want to target specific markets, right? And these markets are heavily already usually pretty liberal as it is. And they want to just make them more liberal. They want to make sure that they control the masses and how they speak, think, and feel. Uh, the document noted that digital games have proven to be an effective tool in building cognitive resistance to disinformation across diverse environments and cultural contexts. So 
Basically, it's been proven that digital games have been an effective tool to indoctrinating people. That's really what they want to say. It's an effective tool to making people view any other opinion other than what the mainstream says as uh, as disinformation, right? So imagine that. Imagine this being trying to uh, essentially trying to be pushed as like the truth. It's such a disgusting thing, but this is where we're at right now. Uh, the U.S. Embassy in The Hague is accepting proposals for the development of a digital game that incorporates active inoculation theory, number one, along with other digital media literacy education methods in a fun interactive experience targeting global Internet users ages 15 and up. Oh, wow. So they're targeting people under 18, too. Not too shocking. Not too shocking. The government does like to get them young. That's that's just the truth of it. And so do other groups of people, apparently. Uh, primary gameplay should stimulate the experience of engaging in common disinformation and propaganda activities while educating the user on a digital literacy applicable in the real world. So again, they're trying to call, they're trying to call anything that doesn't go with the mainstream narrative as propaganda, which is hilarious because if everybody believes all the same thing, then that's essentially propaganda. You guys are believing all the same fucking thing coming out from the mainstream narrative, and you cannot believe anything that even remotely goes against what they say. Because if you do, then that's propaganda. That's not allowed. You can't do that. You can't engage in that, right? Disinformation, all that stuff. Um, then it says successful proposals will incorporate active inoculation theory and address current disinformation and propaganda tactics. The delivered product should be modular, scalable, and expandable so that later iterations could address additional problem sets such as violent extremism and health misinformation. Oh, health misinformation. Yeah. I Gee, I wonder what caused that one. What's causing them to talk about health misinformation? I can only imagine. Uh, the game will be piloted simultaneously with players in the United Kingdom and the Netherlands, and lessons learned from these pilots will inform the final version of the game intended ultimately for global audiences it stated yes because clearly the goal is to get global audiences to all think see and feel the same exact way this is what you literally call propaganda just on a mass scale global propaganda if they can push this out there and slowly but surely use this video game and others like it to try to get them to think act and feel exactly how they want them to then hey the game the game is doing the work for them they don't have to do it for they don't have to do it themselves uh, it appears the game was indeed funded as a number of congressmen, including Michael T. McCall, the chairman of the House of Foreign Affairs Committee, Brian Mass, Christopher H. Smith, Daryl Issa, Maria Elvira Salazar, Keith Self, Corey Mills, and Ken Buck sent a letter to Secretary of State Anthony Blinken regarding the game and other issues related to the Global Engagement Center. The congressman wrote the GEC continues to stray from its founding mission through its subsidized censorship of free speech and disfavored, uh, disfavored opinions. Disfavored disfavored opinions really you know i i like how they try to change up the the you know i guess the wording or the narrative around certain things right so they'll call it disinformation now they're saying disfavored opinions so opinions that are not favorable well who decides what opinions are favorable an opinion is an opinion there's no fact behind it it's just an opinion from the point of view of whoever's saying it so who decides which opinions are favorable for people to consume and who's not obviously the government does that's why they're doing this uh, though it's subsidized censorship of free speech and disfavored opinions, particularly by established conservative media and in, oh, there it is. Uh, just waiting for the buzzwords, conservative media and individuals through grants, partnerships and awards to entities, including the Global Disinformation Index, the Institute for Strategic Dialogue, the Atlantic Council's Digital for Rental. What is with these names? What is with it? all these names sound like they come from, I don't know, tw 2099 fucking space exploration. Like what is going on here? Uh, the GEC also appears to take official position that populism, whether at home or abroad, is an effort to democracy or an affront, I'm sorry, to democracy and the First Amendment rights of all Americans. What a fucking joke. This thing is an absolute joke. So your idea of First Amendment rights for all Americans, right, that you supposedly care about so much, your idea of that is to suppress the First Amendment rights of all Americans, to suppress their speech and consider whatever goes against the, the mainstream to be disfavorable opinions? Does that sound like people who care about the First Amendment to you? Because it sure as fuck doesn't sound like it to me. It sounds like communists that are in hiding waiting for their chance to strike. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Hope you did enjoy it. If you did, consider leaving me a subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. Don't forget to like the video, comment, let me know what you thought, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Hypnotic out.